Goodram Show with me, Chris Goodram. As per usual, a big thank you to everybody that watched last week's episode of the show. Liked, commented, all that kind of stuff. Um, yes, very, very much appreciated. Um, still some comments that I haven't caught up with, um, so I'll obviously uh, endeavour to do so as soon as I can, so uh, bear with me, but uh, please keep your comments coming. Uh, I do, do very much appreciate them. Um, Talking of comments, I had a lovely email from Hugh at uh, James Eady. Uh, enjoyed last week's episode of the show. Um, as he and pretty much everybody else knows by now that uh, you, know, you send me samples, I will give you an honest honest review. And uh, at the end of the day, that's all, all you can do, really. Um, so, uh, on to this week's episode of the show. At time, I thought, for something a little bit different. Um, as you may know, I get sent samples. <laughs> I get sent samples by distilleries, distributors, uh, and you lovely guys that uh, watch the show as well kindly uh, drop me in samples from time to time, which is really nice. Um, and, you know... Sometimes I think, yeah, I really want to do an episode of the show with that, but for, you know, it, I either don't get enough from the same distillery or same country or, or whatever. There never seems to be a kind of a right time, I suppose, to sort of um, uh, use them. And I was having a, a rummage a couple of weeks ago, sort of, you know, getting a few sets of samples together for episodes of the show. And, uh, and, and I thought, you know what? Let's just do a sort of a random episode. Um, I mean, there is a sort of theme. These are all world whiskies. There's no Scottish whiskies in today's episode of the show. Um, and, you know, I just thought it it was about time to sort of like, you know, just show some of these, these samples um, because they've been knocking around for quite some time. Um, so as you can see... Um, uh, a couple of them have come from my, my good friend Ian Sunderland. Another another sample came from my good friend um, Richard Hall. So very much appreciated uh, for of those samples. A couple of others have come from the um, distillery or distributors, and uh, I think one sample was a an old sample actually that I tasted uh, for the whiskey magazine back <laughs> way back when when I was a part of that uh, that uh, organisation to a certain extent. Um, so yeah, that that. All different distilleries. Um, I'm not going to go into a huge amount of information about them. Uh, if you do want to sort of look up on those distilleries, you'll find links to their website in the text below. I'll obviously speak about them a little bit when uh, when uh, when, we, when I introduce the lineup and the reasonings why I've chosen all that kind of stuff. So, um, not going to say a great deal else apart from let's have a look at today's lineup. Right, okay, so we're going to kick off with a sample from my good friend Ian Sunderland. This is a Caden Heads World Whiskies Union Distillery five-year-old, bottled at 58.4%, um, and I believe bottled in autumn of 2022. Now, I... I always love tasting whiskey from distilleries that I've never tasted before, and especially when they come from countries that, shall we say, on the surface, are not exactly renowned for the production of, um, of single malt whiskies. Uh, obviously, the Union Distillery is situated in Brazil, which is more commonly known for, for distilling cachaça. Um, although in saying that, the Union Distillery itself has been distilling single malt apparently since the mid-70s, I think. So um, they've got plenty of, uh, of, of, of time to iron things out. And it's always, like I say, there's always a sort of a, an intrigue, you know, in with regards to d distilleries, certainly from, you know, other countries. Um, what's their spirit going to be like? What are they trying to say? That kind of thing. And um, yeah, so <laughs> apart from uh, what was that Mexican spirit? I can't remember what the hell it was now. I remember t tasting a sample of a, of a Mexican single malt. And um, well, yes, I think enough said about that. The better, to be honest with you. But hopefully this one <laughs> won't be uh, like that. So uh, it, it will be interesting to see. Um, just second bottling, interesting one to have in a sort of a random lineup is a Mac Myra. As you know, I have done a number of episodes of the show purely on Mac Myra's releases. And that was because I used to get sent samples on a regular basis. Um, since having been sent this sample of um, the... Uh, bottling called the destination um in um well i think it was uh, late 2022 i've heard absolutely nothing no samples no nothing angela has left the com company um it seems like you know the wheels have well and truly fallen off and um yeah it, it, so th this bottling the destination is um 
again, a, probably one of, I don't know whether this was Angela's kind of last bottlings, I don't know whether she was responsible for it or not, uh, but 33% of this had been aged in 600 litre X port cast, 33% in 200 litre American oak, 25% in 200 litre X bourbon, and 9% in 300 litre Oloroso seasoned American oak. Now, when they sent this, the, the email out for this, it was, uh, they, they kind of, they were bigging it up big time, shall we say. You know, they were sort of sending out this email saying, Mac Myra Destinations is coming, etc., etc. And I was thinking, wow, this could be really intriguing. Are they going to now produce a range of bottlings from uh, the, the different, um, uh, the, the, the different uh, aging places that they have. I mean, you know, you've got the Bodas Mines, the Forest R Repository. You've even got the floating um, warehouse on the Seine. Um, and I was thinking, yeah, this this could be really intriguing. But no, that was not it. It was just one bottling, and they called it Macmyra Destinations. But anyway, we shall see what it tastes like. Okay, bottling number three is from the James Sedgwick Distillery in. Um, South Africa. Uh, this is the Three Ships 2005 10 year old limited edition, uh, I believe the fourth release, uh, which was distilled in July of 2005 um, and released in 2015. I tasted that, for, like I said, for the Whiskey Magazine in 2016, so sample's been knocking around for a few years now. Um, and I, I remember tasting the first bottling that came out of uh, the Three Ships distillery. It was um, heavily sherried and I remember being really quite underwhelmed by it. It was kind of like, you know, I wanted to know what, what South African single malt was all about and all I got was a, a mouthful of sherry. I mean, it really was pretty disappointing, it has to be said. Um, obviously, as you can see from this, no sherry in sight, so uh, we should get all of that lovely uh, distillery character, so I'm really looking forward to that one. Moving on to the next bottling, again back to Sweden, this is the High Coast Distillery, this is the Have Oak Spice, bottled at 48%, it's comprised of 80% unmalted barley and 20% peated barley, aged in a combination of bourbon, ex-Hungarian and ex-Swedish oak. Don't know which batch number this is, there's been several batches, but uh, really looking forward to that. Now. Um, for, you, for those of you that know, um, or, or probably don't know, uh, you may well remember that the, uh, the, the High Coast Distillery was originally called something else until a certain other bottling company, um, Compass Box, decided to sort of um, be, be real bastards. Um, I, I mean, you know, it's, it's funny. I, I mean, since that point in time, I, I've, I lost all respect for Compass Box, it has to be said, and John Glazer. I mean, I used to have you know the utmost respect for his ability as a blender, and they crafted some amazing whiskies and you know from people I mean I personally never met the bloke uh, but from per people that had met him and knew him you know they said he was a really nice guy and then pulls a, a shitty stunt like that you know and I lost all respect for him and now I, I will not you know I have no interest in their, their whiskey whatsoever because of that but anyway um, that's that's obviously you know completely irrelevant to today's tasting so I'm really looking forward to the high coast because I thought you know they are a really intriguing distillery uh, then uh, we're moving on to uh, the one and only Japanese whiskey in today's lineup. Uh, the um, this is the Hatazaki 12-year-old Umeshu cask finish. Hmm, interesting. So it's a blend of uh, five-year-old plus uh, single malt whiskey, um, which has been aged for a further 12 years. So technically speaking, it's actually a lot older than 12. You know. Um, in ex-American oak uh, and then it spent six months finishing in ex uh, meshu casks which is Japanese plum liqueur um, so should be really really intriguing um, and yeah looking forward to that one the final bottling another one from my good friend Ian Sunderland is a private cask from milk and honey you may well remember um, can't remember how long ago it was. Quite a while ago, I did an episode of the show on milk and honey. A really intriguing and interesting Israeli distillery. So this is <laughs> a three-year-old private cask. Um, cask number. It's a STR cask. Uh, two two o one eight dash o five three p. Distilled in January of two 
2018 bottled in June of 2021 64.5% you know <laughs> yeah right uh, that, that's that's why it's at the end <laughs> uh, anyway so um, and I realized that I haven't actually filled my butt oh better go and do that right okay so but um, suitably um, <laughs> filled shall we say uh, let's uh, let's make the start and uh, crack on uh, with the uh, the Union Distillery 5 roll. Looking forward to this. Let's see what the nose gives us. Okay. Um, barley accented. So plenty of barley up front. It's a bit young. There's some rose petal mar notes. Um, a little bit of bung cloth. It's almost it's a slightly smoky kind of herbally note as well. I wonder whether that some smoke has got in here somehow maybe maybe slight some peated malt possibly um maybe not maybe it's just wood smoke i think possibly rather than than peat smoke some honey some vanilla it's young it's 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 young i mean it's it's not hugely complex um but it's interesting i mean so obviously you know they're setting their stall out to produce a sort of like quite barley forward and it's got a nice naturalistic sort of barley kind of character not quite gristy but you can really smell that sort of natural barley it's not particularly sweet barley it's a sort of like i said quite quite natural quite unsweetened a little bit of beeswax now i mean yeah it's not a not a bad nose at all let's see what comes on quite oily more of that beeswax kind of note barley um, a little edgy a little bit acetic on the mid palate um, young touch more oak possibly a little bit more vanilla um, a little bit masked on the finish that alcohol is kind of um, cutting the, uh, the the finish somewhat short let's put a little drop of water with it um, and see what that does to it Okay, so it's kind of cleaned up the nose a little bit. I mean, I'm not saying the nose was dirty to start off with, but it had that kind of rawness. Um, it's a little bit more fragrant. There's more, more citrus. It's brought out a little bit of oak, a little bit sweeter. I was about to say it's probably less complex, but it wasn't exactly overly complex to start off with. I mean, there was enough there. It's interesting. Um, so that's right. Again, cleaner, sweeter, a little bit more citrus, quite a nice balance. Again, a bit on the short side, young, not overly complex, it has to be said. Um, there's that slight acerbic note right on the aftertaste. A um, little bit of drying tannins, slight bit of chewy malt. I mean, it's, it's pleasant. I'd like to see that with some more age. I'd like to see you know where the distillery is going they're obviously producing a quality spirit it's like I said it has a very naturalistic kind of feel to it um, and yeah I think that would that's going to be an interesting distillery to watch assuming that of course you know that it becomes more readily available I mean this was a Caden Heads bottling I don't know whether uh, distillery bottlings actually make their way over to the UK or not but uh, um, anyway I suppose that if they don't you, you guys that watch from uh, um, South America may well um, may well know a damn sight more about it than me. But anyway, um, from this bottling's perspective, yeah, interesting. All right, okay, so moving on to the MacMyra destination. So ex bourbon, ex American oak, ex port, ex sherry. Let's see what the nose gives us. Slightly herbal, um, toasty oak barley marzipan sweet vanilla a little bit of the porty fruit it's all right you know it's kind of like when you think about some of the mind-blowing bottlings that mac myra have produced over the years um this is actually quite i hate to say it but really quite disappointing um 
the, the, the rear, you know, I mean, if this was Angela's last bottling, and, and, you know, I don't wish to sort of denigrate anything she's done in the past, one gets the feeling this was just chucked together. Um, and the nose, it's kind of, yeah, it's all right. There's, I can smell the component parts, but I'm just not getting that kind of excitement, you know, um, which is a bit of a shame. Anyway, let's see what that's like. Got grippy on the finish, got earthy, quite a lot of tannin. Um, again, I mean, I, it's kind of kicks off with that sort of porty red fruit, and the red fruit kind of comes back on on the finish. So yeah, nice progression. Moving into sort of like uh, the American oak, a little bit of dried fruit from the sherry, but again, it's just not really that exciting. Um, am I being a bit too hard on this? Possibly. Um, I mean, you know, distilleries that I love, you know, like Brooklady, Springbank and so on and so forth, and MacMyra, um, I tend to possibly be a little bit more critical because I know the quality of stuff that these distilleries can produce. And, and frankly, although there's nothing wrong with this whiskey, it's perfectly good whiskey, it's just nowhere near the sort of like the levels that, that, that I know that they can achieve. So hopefully they've got a new master blender in, hopefully they've been doing some work behind the scenes. I mean, obviously they've got a big palette of, of, of flavours and aromas and casks and so on to choose from. And I really hope that Mac Myra come back firing on all cylinders this year, but we shall see, I suppose. Okay, so moving on to the James Sedgwick Distillery. Uh, this is the Three Ships 10 year old limited edition. Now I know the Three Ships uh, and the you know, bottlings from the James, James Sedgwick Distillery tend to sort of like, you know, pick up quite an awful lot of uh, awards uh, in uh, competition. So let's see what the nose is like. Oh, that's gorgeous. I mean, that really is wonderfully intense, aromatic, fruity, you know, Peaches, apricot, lime, mango, pineapple, um, not perfumed, not bubblegummy, not overly sweet, estuary. Um, now, I think from memory, I think they do use quite a long wort fermentation time to sort of essentially create a very estuary sort of uh, base to their spirit. And... Mm, that's absolutely gorgeous. Touch of American oak, a little bit of vanilla, a uh, little bit of spice. I mean, that is just just a beautiful nose, it has to be said. Unfortunately, <laughs> you probably can't buy it. I mean, you might be able to, might have, uh, there may well be able, uh, other versions of this on the market. I mean, I know it's a limited edition, so there's probably other um, releases that may be available. And if they're as good as this, you yeah, know, buy them. Yeah, anyway, let's see what that's like. That's a nice palette. Maybe not quite so exuberantly fruity. The um, There's a little bit more oak. There's a bit more malt. Um, the fruitiness is slightly kept under wraps a little bit, but I can still pick up apricot. I can still pick up pineapple. Um, maybe not quite so tropical. Um, there's some apple. There's some banana. Um, a little bit more oak character. A little bit more vanilla. A little bit more tannin. It grips a little bit more, it has to be said. But the finish is lovely. Um, and... It's a almost sort of astringent peatiness, just right, right on the very end. Um, I wonder whether a little bit of peated barley has been used in this, possibly, um, because it certainly feels that way. On certainly on the finish, didn't pick that up on the nose. I'm pretty certain I didn't pick up any. Mm, okay, maybe there's a a little bit of smoke there, so possibly a little bit of peated barley has gone in there. But overall, stunning whiskey, absolutely stunning. <laughs> Right, okay, so let's move on to the oak spice. Let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Now, would you be surprised if I said, that's a bloody oaky nose. Um, lots of oak. Virgin, sweet, 
creamy vanilla oak, marzipan, more vanilla. It's almost kind of like um, vanilla putty. Um, it's a little bit of barley, there's a little bit of white fruit, there's a slight sort of Sauvignon blanc -y kind of herbal nettle note coming through. You kind of have to let it sit for the oak to kind of just drop off a bit. If you give it sort of, you know, a lot of the aeration, that really does kind of bring out the oak. Um, I mean, the quality is pretty damn good. I mean, I know these guys are, you know, really, really geeky. I mean, they were sort of like one, almost the original geeks, you know, their website gave you the ins and outs of, of, uh, of their bottlings, you know, well before Waterford and all that kind of stuff, but... Yeah, um, I, I think if you, I think you, it's it's a nice whiskey as long as you love lots of bloody oak. Um, I'm not quite sure what the Hungarian oak is adding. Um, maybe some spice notes, possibly. Um, it certainly feels more about the Swedish and the American oak. I mean, certainly, uh, Mac Murray is an awful lot of Swedish oak, and it's you know I can pick that up quite readily. It's got that lovely sweetness to it. Yeah, I mean, it's a nice nose. Um, let's see what the power's on. Again, very oaky. Lots of vanilla. Marzipan. Corn oil. Um, butter. A little bit of spice. A little bit of cinnamony sort of spice notes um sweet spice um again sort of certainly some virgin oak kind of notes um again not a great deal of distillery character happening here um there's a sort of feeling of subtropical fruit just sort of like underlying all of that oak i mean it's an interesting experiment at the end of the day personally i think it's a little unbalanced um it's a there's a, I, there's a citric note, there's a minerality, I mean, yeah, I mean, it is balanced insofar that there, it's, it's not just an, a, a, an overt oak monster, although the oak is very prevalent and very dominating. Um, there is a, an element of spirit there, but I really can't pick up the spirit apart from more, it's more sensing the spirit, I suppose, and feeling that there's something other than just a, you know, a mountain of wood there. Um, I have tasted other bottlings from the distillery, which I think tend to be sort of like a little bit better balanced than this. But this has obviously been produced, you know, because of they, they wanted to experiment with all these different oak casks. But overall, yeah, it's, it's, it's OK. Right, OK, so let's move on to the Hatazaki uh, 12 year old. So as far as I'm aware, um, this is all malt whiskey that's pr been produced at the distillery. Um, I know the, the blend that they produce, which is actually quite a lovely blend, it has to be said, um, does have um, some imported uh, spirit, uh, probably grain and malt in it, because uh, it, it tastes pretty much like a Speyside whiskey. So. Um, and of course, as we know, Japanese whiskey, you know, as long as it's bottled in Japan, doesn't actually have to, the, the whiskey itself doesn't actually have to be physically made in Japan for it to be labelled as a Japanese whiskey. Um, you know, it is what it is at the end of the day. I mean, maybe they, they will, I mean, I know there's some of the distilleries have signed up to a sort of like um, uh, a kind of informal um labeling of you know of japanese made whiskey and all that kind of stuff and there's no sort of legislation i don't as far as i'm aware i don't think there's anything planned but then that's the japanese for you i suppose anyway um let's let's just see what the whiskey is like shall we um mm, okay that's nice it's it's earthy it's got that lovely sort of sweet plummy notes um but there's some earthy sort of straw like plum fruits as well um, there's a touch of malt, a little bit of white fruit, apple possibly, apricot, a touch of honey, some minerals. That's a lovely nose actually. I mean, that's, again, nice balance, really well balanced. Um, it's not the most complex of noses, it has to be said. Um, but I think it's got interest, it's got intrigue. Um, so that's one.
the, dry, the sort of dried plummy liqueur note kind of runs all the way through that. It kind of kicks off with a, a little bit of a straw-like kind of plum note and, and sweetens as it kind of like hits the mid palate and then sort of tails off a little bit towards the end. But that sort of plum liqueur note is a sort of a, a constant... Um, a constant element throughout the whole of the of the of the palette. Um, pleasantly balanced. There's some malt. There's some spice. There's a little bit of vanilla. Um, I like the finish. I mean, it's got a nice earthiness to it, but it's got which is balanced by the sweetness of the plum liqueur. It's 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 harmonious. I think um, that the the finish doesn't isn't overdoing it. it. It surprisingly doesn't taste as old as I was expecting. There isn't that sort of mm, overt mature element which I would expect from essentially an almost a 17 year old whiskey um, but you know I think it's got interest um, it kind of fills the gap um, where the old um, uh, other plum liqueur uh, Japanese whiskey used to live and I for I'm trying to desperately trying to remember the name of it now it's just it was on the tip of my tongue and has now completely disappeared um, but anyway, um, so it kind of like it does fill a kind of a, a gap, I suppose. Um, the quality is pretty good, so yeah. Right. Okay. So on to the final whiskey of the afternoon. So this is the Milk and Honey three-year-old private cask. Let's see what the nose goes on this end, shall we? Oh lordy, you can smell that cask. I mean, that is kind of, that's intense. I mean, that is bitter STR cask, tannins, bitter spice, pepper. I Surprisingly, there is some element of spirit underneath all of that. I, I believe you me, there is a little bit there. Um, there's a little bit of, of, of apricot, some pineapple even. Um, but it's more about the str cast that intense bitter spice bitter tannin um touch of dried red fruit there's a little bit of a little bit of coconut coming out now possibly um sort of nuttiness i mean it's intense i mean it really is um it's sort of dialed up to 11 it has to be said um a touch of menthol coming out now um i mean yeah. I, and, and this is the thing, I mean, if you sort of look back at uh, the episode of the show I did on sort of like the, the distilleries releases, they love their oak. I mean, you know, they're sort of gone down the, the, the Cavalan um, kind of path with regards to sort of like, you know, monstrous amounts of oak. Um, and uh, this is absolutely, you know, fits into their profile absolutely perfectly. Anyway, let's see what the path is. Oh my god, the tannins, they're just killing me. Um, the tannins, the alcohol, it's just kind of like sucking the moisture out of my mouth. I mean, it is just like, oh, wow. Um, and then, then you kind of like, sort of like go, what the hell am I tasting? It's kind of thick. It's kind of whiny. There's an inordinate amount of whininess. A bit of tannins, there's um, subtly sweet tannins. There's um, minerals. There's kind of um, salt um, alcohol, um, subtle it ain't, shall we say, I mean, this is like, you know, really hitting you in the face, you know, it, it, it is, it just, like I say, it reminds me very much of Cavalan, that intense oak dominated spirit, um, which just basically just screams at you, you know, there was, there's no subtlety here whatsoever, you can argue that that's kind of, um, Israel for you, but, um, yeah, that's intense. Let's put a little drop of water with it. Uh, maybe that will um, just mellow things out a little bit. Um, let, but let's see. Okay, so it's slightly tamed the STR a bit, but I mean, I can still just smell, you know, red fruits. Um, not quite so bitter. It's a little bit softer. Um, slightly oilier as well. Not quite as complex. Not quite as in your face. Um, a little bit more approachable, possibly. Um, 
I think personally, I think I would stick with it neat, you know, I mean, like, yeah, if, you, if you're going to go go big, go big, you know, um, anyway, sort of pass on that. sweeter a lot more red fruits less tannins less bitterness um less intensity but i mean still got plenty of red fruits um quite nutty quite dense malty no real distillery character coming through at all don't really get any spirit character um it is just 100 percent oak um and to me I'm afraid that is a, is a definition of an unbalanced whiskey. doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad whiskey, or it's not a fun whiskey, because it is a hell of a fun whiskey, but it's not. It's unbalanced because, you know, all I'm getting is oak at the end of the day. Um, but, you know, like I said, <laughs> it's not subtle, uh, and it is what it is, as they say. Right, okay, so let's sum today's episode of the show up. Firstly, a big thank you to everybody that uh, supplied samples for today's episode of the show. I, I personally think it's been, been been a lot of fun, it has to be said. I really do like tasting world whiskies. I like tasting the weird and wonderful. Um, sometimes they, they, they can turn out to be sort of absolutely mind-blowing. Sometimes they, they have their um, issues, shall we say. Um, but, you know, I thought the Union Distillery five-year-old it was a five-year-old whiskey at the end of the day. It was very young. It didn't have an inordinate amount of complexity. I wouldn't have expected it to. But it's interesting to see what the distillery is doing. And like I said, that they are that they they've decided to sort of develop. You know, whether they've decided to do it or whether it's just the way it's turned out, I don't know. But that it's a very natural feel to it. A very natural barleyed spirit. Um, I think it's obviously going to sort of lend itself to sort of you know prolonged maturation and i would love to see that with a few more years under un, on its belt um the mac Myra destination like i said um disappointed by it and because i know you know uh, mac Myra can do an inordinate amount of better bottlings than this i mean it kind of reminds me to a certain extent of my school reports um which always said could do better and i always used to say at my old chap i used to say look you know they can't say anything good about me, they can't say anything bad about me, so they just say, could do better. It's kind of like a bit of a stock phrase, isn't it? But it, the reality is that Magmara could do a damn sight better than that, it has to be said. Um, the James Sedgwick bottling, absolutely stunning. Um, and this was the thing. Um, this is what really disappointed me about their first first UK release, which was just an Oloroso Sherry Monster. And it was just kind of like, well... I don't know what the hell, you know, this distillery is trying to tell me. I don't know what South African whiskey is trying to tell me. But now I can. Age it in American oak, you know. And, I, and sometimes I know I bang on about it. But, you know, I want to know what the distillery is trying to tell me. I want to know what their spirit is like. And I love the James Sedgwick's spirit. It is just absolutely gorgeous. Um, the High Coast, um, again... I love the distillery i love what the distillery is doing i love the sort of like the transparency this particular bottling really didn't tick all my boxes too oaky um too unbalanced again um there was an element of, of spirit character but you know it, it was kind of really just all about the oak um the uh, hatazaki meshu cast finish like that thought that was a lovely whiskey um surprised at how sort of relatively youthful the spirit character was i would something of that kind of age i would expect a little bit more maturity but love the balance um and like i said it kind of like fill fills a bit of a gap um the milk and honey well you know it's, it was what i expected at the end of the day um and they are like i said very very much like cavalan um the uh, with and it's exact i have the same feelings about cavalan as i do about milk and honey i love their entry level bottling the sort of really standard bottling um because it's just, just so nicely balanced you know yes all right you know with cavalan there's so many bloody oak 
different oak cask user, but even so it kind of works. It's just when they start to get into their sort of single cask bottlings and all this kind of stuff in there, they're all big sherry monsters, wine monsters, um, even the, the American oak bottling uh, that Cavalan do is just an over bloody monster of, of bourbon oak. Um, and to a certain extent, you can say exactly the same about milk and honey. I love their sort of standard bottling. It's just such a, a great whiskey. Um, although in saying that, the Dead Sea bottling I thought was really, really cool. Um, but this one, like I said, you know, a little bit overly oaked. Again, like a couple of the other bottlings in today's episode of the show, I would have to categorise as, as, as unbalanced because of the fact they were too overly oaky. But anyway, I hope you think this week's episode of the show has been really intriguing. I, I love it. I think this has been a really interesting episode of the show. I've loved going back and tasting these, these whiskies. Some of them, like I said, have been you know absolutely stunning. Some maybe less so. But at the end of the day, um, yeah. So all that's left to say is... Good afternoon and good running.